tablets might be a bit of a fringe category for plenty of users, but that isn't stopping companies from making them. And Amazon is one of those companies, injecting a lot of their ecosystem into this 10-inch tablet that can pull multiple duties. So let's take this 10-inch screen for a spin into the great big Amazon jungle. This is Pocket Now, and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is the Amazon Fire HD 10. The main details about this product are right in the name, the Fire HD 10. So you know what you're getting into with a 10-inch screen that is at full HD resolution, which is of course 1080p. Now, we're not going to bury the lead here, this is a very affordable tablet, and it does cut back on quite a few aspects to hit that $149 price point, and the display is where that all starts. The Full HD resolution means that you're not going to be getting that 4K video content coming through even if that's why you watch stuff on Amazon Prime Video. On top of all of that, it's a rather run-of-the-mill IPS display. So no, you won't be getting super vivid HDR-like content, nor will you be getting high resolution, but the screen will probably be plenty for most people who aren't that discerning. The panel does get plenty bright for all of those places around, let's say, the house that you might be viewing content. It's also, interestingly enough, an Energy Star certified display. And then for those times when you're binging content at night before bed, there's also a blue light filter right in the settings. It does seem to me that media consumption is the main way to enjoy the Fire HD 10. After all, there's a myriad of shows and movies in this prime video catalog that work just fine on this display. Now, if there are a couple of genres of content that suffer a little bit on a screen like this, to me it's gaming and text. Now don't get me wrong, the screen gets the jobs done in both regards, but if you're a big Kindle person already, your e-reader is probably way better than this bright screen being right up in your face. And I'm definitely spoiled by higher resolution, HDR-capable displays on other Android devices, which means I wouldn't say that this tablet is really a gaming machine. Not to mention the other two factors. The MediaTek Helio P60T is in here, and it's a capable but measured chipset compared to upper tier performers. And the availability of titles in the Amazon App Store can be an uneven experience, but I'll talk more about the App Store later. Looking at the rest of the tablet, the HD10 gets the same design refresh that the HD8 got a little bit of time ago. The signature Amazon logo is on the back in this blue edition that has a nice matted feel, which does help with the handling. All of the buttons and the inputs, including a headphone jack, are on one of the short sides, basically making it clear that this tablet is meant to be experienced in landscape orientation. In that orientation, you also get stereo speakers pointed upward for optimal enjoyment. The speakers could be a little bit richer, they mainly lack fidelity in the lower end frequencies, and that's likely addressed in the upper tier version of this tablet, the Fire HD 10 Plus, because those speakers have Dolby enhancements, you don't get that here. That said, the headphone jack allows for proper enjoyment when you're, let's say, deep into season 5 of Scrubs, or you're watching the latest movies on Prime Video like The Tomorrow War. Now as far as battery life is concerned, uh, Amazon does claim 12 hours, but I haven't ever really had to worry about it because my viewing and even my script writing sessions haven't ever gotten close to being that long. I'm inclined to say that this tablet will survive that amount of time, uh, since one day I did script for a few hours and then the next day I played episodes of anime, and then I still had plenty left over for whatever the next day brought. Speaking of which, unless you actively hit the download button on any content, all of the fun on this tablet is basically through the cloud. Bear in mind though that there is only 32GB of onboard storage, at least in my model, with 25 of it being available to the user. There is a 64GB storage option available though. And true to Amazon's penchant for pointing users to their ubiquitous market space, even the storage area in the settings pages suggests that you can expand the storage with an SD card easily found on Amazon. You really gotta love it when a product really leans into its roots and when it knows what it is because that is the point of the Fire Tablets. They're a gateway into the Amazon jungle. Every surface level interaction with this tablet is just another bit of content that comes from the greater Amazon ecosystem, right down to the widgets on the home screens that are constantly pointing to your new items that you might have purchased from any of the different markets. Slide over to the library tab and you have more of your various catalogs splayed about, including applications that you might have installed from the Amazon App Store and any audiobooks from yet another piece of the Amazon umbrella, Audible. The Amazon Fire HD 10 is simply a way of accessing everything Amazon, and that's totally fine for users that are really entrenched into all of this content. And of course, the shopping is something that you would do on there, but it's all accessed through the good old Amazon application. It's when you get over to the For You page that you see the other expected layer, ads and suggestions. The For You page is an absolute exercise in algorithmic content. As you get thrown apps, news, uh, new subscriptions, new movies, and new books informed all by your browsing history in the Amazon world. If you're already the type of person to window shop on Amazon, this screen is just another window for you to peer through. 
One thing to know though is that what you see is what you get. Your content, your suggestions, your ads. You can change the background if you wanted to, but everything else pretty much remains the way it's meant to look. This is the canvas that allows Amazon to reach you no matter what. And it's kind of funny how a product like this that is very services forward can remind you of the services you're not using. For example, in the Amazon ecosystem, I forgot that I had credits just sitting in Audible. I don't even use Amazon Music and I actually canceled that subscription along with Kindle Unlimited because I don't use them enough. And then there's Amazon Photos, which is a big amount of storage that's included in your Prime membership. Mine is totally empty. But all the services are here nonetheless, and it's all ready for you to access as long as you are a big Amazon person. But if you want to step out of the jungle, it's a little harder than you might think. You see, the Fire HD 10 is one of the most affordable Android tablets out there, and as long as you can find all of the streaming services and apps that you need, it's a really easy gateway into all that content. Disney+, Plus, Netflix, and even HBO Max are all installed on here right now despite the way that they compete with Prime Video. Accessing main social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook is also possible, again adding to the notion that this tablet is a great consumption device. But the only other ecosystem or services that are actively left out of here is, well, anything Google. You'll notice that in the app area here, it doesn't have the YouTube logo. Instead, it says YouTube.com. That's because in order to access any applications that aren't already in the Amazon App Store, you'll have to use the built-in Silk browser to access the web versions of those apps. Now this makes a lot of sense because Fire OS is a forked version of Android, which is to say they use Android to kind of build everything together, but it doesn't use Google Play services. That means apps like Gmail, YouTube, or anything else Google has to go through the web browser. The same went for any other apps I couldn't find in the App Store, like Notion or Dashlane. And it's for that reason that the Fire HD 10 actually felt a little bit like a laptop once I paired it with the productivity bundled keyboard. I'd have a bunch of tabs open like I would on my desktop browser to access all of the same stuff. I mentioned script writing earlier and I would use the web version of Notion for that or I could actually use Microsoft Office because if you get the productivity bundle it comes with the keyboard and a 12 month subscription to the Office suite which you then install on the tablet. By the by, the keyboard case is actually quite nice to use. It gives the screen some protection and the keyboard was nice to use for those long typing sessions. So if you're at all going to use this tablet as a productivity device, the bundle with the keyboard and with Microsoft Office is, I think, definitely worth the extra cost. Okay, so we've covered basically all of Amazon, all through the window, that is the Fire 10 HD. There's one last aspect to that whole ecosystem though, the Alexa of it all. By the way, don't worry, I won't be saying that hot word anymore after this. Like plenty of other Fire products, saying the A word brings up the Amazon Assistant, which will answer your simple queries, control any smart home products that you have connected to your account, or even help you shop with your voice. But the new Fire tablets take it a step further by pulling double duty in a new layer, the Echo Show layer. Pull down the notification shade and you'll see a toggle for the show mode, which effectively makes the tablet an Echo Show device. And with this Fire 10 HD, it basically becomes an Echo Show 10, except it doesn't swivel around to follow you. I may not be a huge A-word user, but I do love products that are versatile and can pull multiple duties. Thanks to show mode, this tablet can just double up as a smart display to give me some quick information, alert me to deliveries that have happened, and respond to my voice commands whenever needed. And because it's an Echo device, it can be used for dropping in on other enabled devices, which is probably the only time I would use the 5 megapixel rear camera or the 2 megapixel front facing shooter. And with a standing case or the keyboard case from the productivity bundle, the display can be propped up to complete its experience as a proper Echo Show. You know what, it kind of blows my mind that for such an affordable price, the Fire HD 10 is basically giving you multiple product capabilities in one. You can do the media consumption, you can be productive if you get the bundle, it's another place to read Kindle books if you can get past the IPS screen, you have access to plenty but not all Android applications, and you get a smart display that remains useful even when the tablet is idle thanks to the Echo Show layer. I still think the Fire HD 10 is best for users who are really entrenched in the Amazon world, especially those who take advantage of all of the perks that are included with a Prime membership. If you're that kind of person and you want an easy to use larger display for on the go enjoyment, this tablet is a perfect companion. For everyone else, there are some workarounds that you might have to contend with, but most other content is still readily available. So it just matters how far into this jungle you might already be. For more on products like the Amazon Fire HD 10, make sure you subscribe to Pocket Now for video content that's coming out basically every day. For now, drop some likes on this video and let us know what you think of this tablet in the comment sections down below. With all of that said, we're going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see you in our next video.